Ryan May, who also goes by RM McAvoy, considers herself a non-traditional people person. Her work in the people space has spanned from startups to ski areas. She's well-versed in the multifunctional, in multifunctional operations for lean people teams. She uses humor to lighten most moods and remind folks that she's not a regular HR, but a cool HR, which I absolutely love. Her strategic focus includes work-life balance, a healthy culture for everyone's mental well-being, and creating a company people actually want to work for. When she's not being a people person, she lives her best old lady life, knitting, reading, wine tasting, and hanging with her husband and cats in the Bay Area. <laughs> Hello, Ryan May. Welcome. Hey, Stephanie, thanks for having me. Yeah, best bio ever. I can tell you're a great yeah. leader of people. <laughs> you're so sweet. Thanks. I usually speak the truth. There's a lot of cats, boring knitting, you know. <laughs> So your company did something that I think a lot of employees salivate at, and that's you guys effectively implemented a four-day work week. We did. Uh, we basically started summer of 2021. There were summer Fridays, which was every other Friday. The company was closed. Like I fortunately came in July, August of 2021 and was like, oh, every other Friday, that's awesome. Uh, and then there was the decision that would be a permanent decision. And then in January of 2022, our COO was like, hey, I'm hearing about four-day work week. What does that look like? As an employee, because I think it's very important for all HR people to acknowledge we are employees. I was like, oh, you're right, because it sounds awesome. But realistically, how is that going to work? And he was like, go do some research. So I did. It was not as much of a buzzword as it is now. Very little in the U.S. Most of it was overseas. UK, I believe University of Reading did a study. So I had like this really sad two slide deck that was just like, hey, here's the little tiny things. There was a Harvard Business Review on how to implement it. So I kind of shared what I had. We decided to do a beta. It was the first quarter. We're going to do a beta. We're going to really just see what this looks like. We're going to tell everybody at the beta. And we kind of just jumped in. We kind of just like went into the deep end and said like, hey, let's do this. Not a lot of framing as there should have been which on our part, mostly my part, was not ideal. So we did the beta. We learned some lessons very fast. How do we keep the app covered? How do we keep the product covered? If people are covering the product on that Friday, who's covering the people if something happens? What about holidays? So we really kind of learned fast and quick on what would and wouldn't work. U.S. holidays being a huge one, we had President's Day. And it was pretty clear, as cool as a three-day work week sounded, not ideal. It was more of us being like, no, I'm not on Slack. I'm not working on Friday. I'm not catching up on all of my stuff. So we really took those lessons. And then we, we do an employer net promoter score every quarter. We're very in touch with our employees' culture. We want to make sure how they're feeling. And it was the number one mentioned thing. It was like, oh my gosh, I love four-day work week. So I was joking like, okay, well, if we're taking this away, not it, not the messenger. Um mm -hmm. So we had this big meeting with all of our management team. And this really is where kind of the Blackthorn magic, as we call it, happens. It's very collaborative. What do we think of this? What are the ideas with this? And we asked everybody to come with why it would work, why it wouldn't work. What do you need for it to work? Um, and we made some really big concessions in scheduling and stuff. The main being month end, quarter end, you know sales, your team's going to work. We really wanted to drive in the message like, if you're working, we want you to take that time later. So April this month and month end is a Friday for us. So the sales team is working. They'll take a week, a day off next week. Get that time back. Find your balance. Don't just give us an extra day because you want to hit your quota. So we were really mindful of that. And then with the holidays, we have grown pretty quick into 14 countries. We oh looked goodness. at, okay... The U.S. holidays, if you have a Monday off, what do we do? So the way we kind of framed it up to just keep it simple for my small but mighty team, we have five U.S. holidays that are Mondays or midweek. That week, everyone outside the U.S. works five days unless they have their own holiday or have requested PTO. And the U.S. team works the four days, whether it's you have Monday off for Memorial Day. I believe Fourth of July is on like a Wednesday this year. So we'll work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And there was really the talk of, do we do that for every country? We could. Ooh, uh, we decided it was easier to say, hey, these five weeks of year, you work five days. There's holidays overseas that we don't have. 
most countries actually have a lot more public holidays than ours. So we kind of, I hate to say sold it, but it was like, hey, your country has 22 bank holidays. We're asking for five. Let's just call it a wash. Unless you would like me to go in and be like, these are the 22 Fridays that'll make up those days. And so everybody was really receptive to it. And it's also the biggest two things we hear is, well, do you work on Fridays? I will do housekeeping stuff on Fridays. We don't do meetings. I'm very conscious not to reach out to my team. We all hold each other kind of accountable. But something that we kind of stand on is you're the entrepreneur of your little section of the company. How are you managing your time? If I make a conscious choice to go get my nails done on a Wednesday afternoon, and then I do two hours on Friday to make up for that, it doesn't affect anyone else. It's me just kind of managing my time. If I miss a meeting on a Wednesday and expect my entire team to show up on a Friday, that's a different story. So we're very mindful of being better with your time, things like that, having the company buy-in, having coverage, because our product isn't Monday through Thursday. So we really worked on rotating schedules and things like that, which took a lot of thought process. And I am beyond grateful to our Blackthorn team because it's not unheard of to be like, okay, people figure that out. You do the holiday calendar. You do all that. Figure out all those idiosyncrasies. And everybody came to the table with something. What if we do a rotating schedule for our support team? What if we have an on-call person for support? How does that look? What is the that phone, everything is on fire emergency. And for us, it's a phone call. We, not a lot of us talk on the phone. We don't have company phones. We don't have that kind of stuff. I like to joke, we're all millennials that are terrified of using our phone for the intended talking purpose. And so someone knows, like, if my boss calls me, I know it's like, oh, break stop. What's going on? Like, this is not good. And it really set the precedent for us of like, what does that look like? How do we manage it? And the impact has been huge on our employee net promoter score, our employees' mental health. Like They're just like, I feel better. I have time. And we've gotten a lot of feedback. It's also engaged because we're a 100% remote team. So there's a lot of struggles. I know there's a forum on that too. The connection has been really authentic and organic in that it has said, hey, I'm sharing this picture of Slack because I'm skiing on Friday and someone else is like, oh, I live in Florida, so I'm on a boat. And it's really created kind of a a social connection that I don't know where else we would recreate in an all remote company. So it's been huge for us. This is such a great story. And all of your insights are absolute gold because like you started out saying, there are so few companies that have done this. So I'd love to start with Blackthorn. So what is the company? What is the product? And what can you tell us a little about the leaders? Like, why were they the the leaders that were like, yeah, we're going to get behind this four day work week? So Blackthorn.io, we are a Salesforce app exchange partner. We have four major components, our main two being events and payments, events, an event like this, an in-person event. We connect to your Salesforce database. We help with check-ins. We can do pages. Payments were the connector. So if you're in the field and your accounting is kept in Salesforce, we can connect the two. There's some texting campaigns related to events and stuff. And then there's some compliance stuff regarding all of those, the data that lives in your CRM. Right. They started in, I believe, 2016. Right. I always mess up the year. It was 2016, 2015. We've been the number one app partner a couple of years in a row. We're huge in higher ed. We do a lot of stuff with nonprofits. And our leadership is actually kind of what drew me in. Our CEO, Chris, is the most amazing man I've ever met in the leadership (laughs) role. He's the anti-CEO. He's very transparent. He's very open. It's not cloak and dagger. It's not, oh, no one else needs to know. And he's really open to things like this. I have worked for CEOs before, as many of us probably had, where even if you're like, let's give everybody one Friday off a month just to go to the DMV and take their dog to the groomer and maybe just like take their kids out of school for an afternoon. They would be like, Oh my gosh, we, we have metrics and we have goals and we have KPIs. And he doesn't think like that. He very much sees every part of Blackthorn, the people, the product, the, the journey to getting to where we need to be. And then you pair it with our COO who is a, he's my drug boss. His name is Stuart. He has the best poker face. I've definitely joked with him before that I don't know how he's feeling or if he's feeling He's very matter of fact and not that touchy feely. And they balance each other really, really well. 
but the common denominator is the people. And both of them have said, work is not life. And we, we have a couple really good analogies we use. The main one being everybody's a foundation. You're a wife, a husband, a mom, a dad, a sister, a neighbor, an activist, whatever you are in that aspect of your life. You're a cat owner, a wine lover, a wine hater. Everything is a piece of this foundation. Blackthorn's just one piece of that. We don't want it to be everything. And if you go, yeah, there's a, there's a next slide where there's some more of our team. It's, it's amazing. They're I always people. Like, they're, they're people. How many startups could say, oh yeah, our AR guy is in a punk band. Mine can. How many AR guys are going to go into Slack and be like, hey guys, I was in a punk show on Saturday night. Check out me playing my guitar solo. It's very much the people behind all of this. And no one here in this collage or any of these slides is I'm just Ryan May, director of people off of Blackthorn.io. Yeah, that's a piece of who I am. I'm also Ryan May, wife. I'm also Ryan May, neighbor. I'm also Auntie Ry Ry to two crazy kids in Texas. You have to be more than just your job. And I think that's what makes this work, as ironic as it sounds. Mm -hmm. We know that this piece of the four days getting stuff done, and there are weeks that it is tight. There are long days, there are fast days, there are Fridays where we pick up some slack. But it makes everything else so much more powerful because you don't have just that piece. Your job's not dictating everything. You're not sitting in the car for three hours commuting. You're Maybe you're working that extra hour, but on Friday you're going to the grocery store or you're, we had in that deck you had just shared two employees that were in two separate scenarios. One's married, he has children, he was with us when we started this change. And the other one joined, had no idea. We were like, oh yeah, we have a four day work week. And the main thing both of them said, their time management. So this is our leadership. I love them. Our CEO has taken up painting. He <laughs> is very creative. He shares his work. I, I think it's just amazing. And our COO is everywhere. He's on a ski slope. He's on a cruise ship. I think he was at a car race this weekend. So it's really nice that they're comfortable enough to share this because again, they're people. They're the leaders, but they're people. And that really for us has made this work because we acknowledge that we get the buy-in on the return. People are dedicated. They want to help. They want to have that work-life balance. So they work harder and they work more efficiently. You were talking about two people that joined at different times. You, you know, one knew about it and one didn't. Is Are these the people? Are there pictures of them here? Yeah. So the first one is Spencer. He's skiing okay. with his wife, Molly. He joined us in our internship program. And we weren't like, oh, you're an intern. You still have to work five days. It was, hey, we do the four-day work week. He, I think he joked also. He's like, is that for real? And I was like, no, it definitely is. And he basically said, I, I did a little case study for these and was like, hey, what is the one thing you take from this? And Spencer, I, I quoted him, said, I'm more committed to my work. My work-life balance is there. I, I know what I need to do to get that Friday. Chad mm. was with us when we made the change. And he I think like me was skeptical, like, how is this going to work? If it sounds too good to be true, human nature is to be like, that's a trap. And we had these discussions of how it would work. And he basically has said it made him better with time management, not just at Blackthorn, with his life. He's like, I have a toddler. She's right there. That's Haley. She's a little cutie. We see her in our social slack. But he has said, hey, I know, like, is it worth it for me to go to the grocery store on Friday so I don't have a toddler with me? Is it worth it for me to not take her to daycare one morning and get donuts? So we have one-on-one -on -one time. It translates across just being an employee or just being a leader. And I think that for us really is like the number one takeaway uh, on all of that. That's great. So you mentioned in the beginning that when you guys first tried this out, there wasn't a lot of research on it. So everything that you're sharing now is a pretty rare playbook. So can you talk us through a little bit about what strategies, including like scheduling, you have here manager buy-in, yeah. what strategies other founders and companies might need to start adopting to be able to make something like this work? I think manager buy-in is number one. I think if you have one manager, if you have 10 managers and one's like, I'm not going to do that, 
They're probably emailing customers on the day off. They're probably making their team do stuff on the day off. They're, they're really emphasizing that unspoken communication of, well, it's okay for them, but not us. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's a culture killer, whatever it is, whether it's four day work week, or this is a value we believe in. So having that buy-in, if you don't have that, I would say stop like hard stop. If you don't have any, and if a little bit of hesitancy, yes, our sales team had to, are we doing meetings on different days? What does that mean for end of month? And we had to have those conversations. And then it was the next level of company buy-in. Do you want to work on Fridays? Okay. If you do, please don't engage the rest of the team. Don't engage customers unless it's an emergency or you're on, which I'll, I'll get to with our point person stuff. And we have this standard out of office that just says, Hey, We've introduced this. If it's an emergency, here's how you, I, I, for example, if it's urgent, mine just says, if this is urgent, please text me at. I've gotten a couple texts. Only one has actually been an emergency. The rest says like, hey, that, that'll get you that on Monday. You can still get a hold of someone. We're still functioning. We're still rolling. We're not just shutting up the doors and closing the curtains and saying, see you Monday, everybody. We have coverage, which I had some, so our engineering team, we have a point person every week. It rotates. That person is there Friday. If the app goes down, if there's a bug, if there's something, if they need to escalate, they can, but they're the first line of defense. And then they take a day the following week. It's not give us an extra time for the rest of your Fridays. It's, hey, take this day. We'll take a day next week. Our support team has the only kind of alternate schedule. They work in two pods. There's an A pod and a B pod. A week, A pod is Monday through Thursday. B pod is Tuesday through Friday. They flip on B weeks. So their schedule is not three day weekends. It's two days, four days, two days, four days. They actually prefer it. We have some adventurous people that'll be like, oh, on my four day, I'm like going to hike for three days and doing things like yeah. that. So again, they're managing their life with their schedule. They're enjoying it. They're using it to their fullest. And we did touch on the holidays. Like if a holiday is on a Monday, you have Monday off. So you get a four day weekend. You work Tuesday through Friday, you have a two day weekend, and then we go back to the, the Fridays off. Okay. You mentioned one option for some companies being like summer Fridays, every other Friday, one Friday off a month. And so I want to like delve into all of the creative possibilities here for other companies. Have you seen other companies do something similar and how did it work for them versus how it's been working for Blackthorn? I have heard, I actually talked to someone yesterday and they do a 40 week week, but they take Wednesdays off. So oh. we were kind of brainstorming and I was like, how does that work? And she's like, oh, we just figured like you have just this midweek break. And I was like, okay, that that's interesting. <laughs> Obviously having Fridays, I was like, oh my gosh, no three day weekends, but you get used to it. I know there are people, I believe Sahar from Better Health company does once in a while, a mental health Friday where everyone just takes a day off. And we've actually talked about this in leadership circles and HR forums. Not everyone can work four days a week. That's okay. Can you do one Friday a month? Can you do it by department? Hey, sales is taking this Friday off because it's the first Friday of the quarter. People's taking this Friday off because payroll's already run. Could you stagnate it? I think you have to be creative and you also have to commit to it. If I'm off and my leaders, I actually have posted about this on LinkedIn before. I'll go into Slack and be working on something and my boss will be like, it is Friday. What are you doing? So you have to hold each other accountable. I'm not saying you have to be like, oh my God, we're off. You're so ridiculous. What are you doing? You have to have that trust and that accountability. Like, hey, are you good? Is, are you falling behind on something? Like, do you need help with something? And I think you can be creative with it. It doesn't have to be every Friday. It can be half days. It could be no meeting days. I know a lot mm -hmm. of companies are running the no meeting days. I have a colleague in my networking group that's like, hey, we just don't do meetings on Friday. It's everybody's head down work. It's things like that. And even that just gives you that mental like. <sighs> it's a mental break. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of leaders start to understand the downside of meetings. At Inside, we calendar block. And I, I want to talk in a minute about like entrepreneur of your own section of the company, because that has a lot to do with the types of roles in your company. But at Inside, a lot of people are responsible for how they manage their own time and what their schedules look like. And we are encouraged to chunk. So like you were saying, a company has a policy of no meetings on one day, you know, a, a, a founder 
or CEO that wants to do something like a four day work week, but light, you know, something way less extreme, they might try to encourage their employees to have a no meeting day that of their choice or something. Or I guess it wouldn't work out if everyone has a different no meeting day. It should probably streamline, shouldn't it? I think it should be streamlined. And we also, <laughs> we're not unrealistic. We have some big product stuff coming up and there has been discussions like, what does that look like? Do we get rid of Fridays? Do we just ask people to cover? And I think hmm. the big thing you hear, especially in startups, is we only want A players. If you have a hundred people, the chances that all of them are A players is pretty slim. They're probably A and maybe some high B players. Reducing work time, will sort them out. If that is your goal to get high performing team, People who are motivated to not just work all the time will get it done faster. It's old Bill Gates, I'd rather hire a stupid man because they'll do it quicker and less steps than I would 10 engineers to do it in a fast way because you're going to find efficiency. And it also shows kind of the buy-in. Like I said, we really build on this principle of you own your space in a black room. I don't say you work 40 hours a week. I don't tell you to clock in and out. I don't tell you, hey, you need to go eat lunch. Hey, you look like you need to go to the bathroom. Why am I telling you how to finish your task? I'm going to say, here's what I need. I'm going to empower you to say, I can't do that by then. Do I shift something? Can I give part of it back to you? I also then give you the power after the second step. If you start it and go, oh my gosh, this is way more intense or way more involved or I'm blocked to raise the flag. I have an HR generalist. She's great. If I ask her for something, hey, I need this by Tuesday. Tuesday rolls around. She's like, oh, I just didn't get to it. Why? Oh, I was too busy with meetings or I had this. Okay, we have Slack, we have email, but instead she'll come to me Monday and say, hey, I'm working on A, B, and C. My thought is I get rid of C, I push B to Thursday to get this done. Yeah, that works. Or, oh, I need B, why don't you give me B, you finish A. It's all about owning each piece of it and really just having that communication, including saying I'm burnt out. Mm -hmm. I'm busy. I'm burnt out. I'm having too many meetings. I'm now blocking my calendar because I've been meeting heavy the last two weeks. And again, taking my own advice, like setting like, okay, I cannot have any more meetings today. <laughs> yeah. Our HR summit day two is going to focus a lot around employee wellness. And you were just mentioning communication. Like one of the apps that's so fascinating to me is called Kona. And it's a dedicated place in Slack where everyone just does a quick check-in every day. So like you said, this is, you know, a safe space to say if you're burning out or slowly getting there or if you're doing good. It's just not every day that everyone is on top of everything. So communication is key. And I think that, again, speaks to our leadership. Our leaders are very transparent, good, bad, and in between. And going to a place, I always use the example, again, I'm a cat lady. I admit it. It is who I am. Our cat got hurt. And I was like, I have to go to the vet. I'm losing my mind. Like, I'm just offline. And no one in our management channel was like, hey, crazy, bring it down. It was, are you okay? Is Bruce okay? Do you need anything? Yeah. What can we do? Don't worry about any of that. I have worked at companies where I have like been in the hospital and my boss is like, but can you just like get that one thing before you go into surgery? And I think we all have, and it's a two part system. You have to have bosses that don't have that expectation. And you also have to learn to be like, Hey, this is not the time. This is not the mm -hmm. venue for me to be sending flags. And it's really empowering for me, especially for my journey I have a lot stricter boundaries with my time in everything than I did before Blackthorn because I'm learning from leadership. I'm learning to say, I just don't have the room for that. I had a friend yeah. last night. She's like, do you want to FaceTime? I was like, no. I was like, I have peoples all day. I'm going to curl up with a movie, maybe knit a little. I'm going to bed at 7.30 and it's going to be the best night of my life. Two years ago, I would, I'd been like, oh yeah, girl, let's talk. Let's do all this. And it wouldn't have mattered. Like I would have just put myself to the side and it's two-way street, but you as leaders and all of us as people, people have to stand up and say, it's okay to talk. It's okay to say what you need. It's okay to say you hate four-day work week. It's okay to say, oh, Ryan May is crazy. I have someone in my network. She's a dear friend. And she's like, I'm so sick of you talking about it because every Friday you're like, I can't get on that call. I'm going golfing. I'm doing this. And I'm like, okay, that's great. Uh, so it's just really about finding what works for you. And also being flexible. That is the number one thing for anybody. No meeting day, one mental health day a month, a quarter, whatever. You have to be flexible. 
I have employees that work on Fridays. You and I chatted on Friday and I was very much like, hey, you're gonna be out of office, but I'm expecting you, like, let's grab time. You have to be flexible because the world, it's just the world. It doesn't, every time you make plans, something's gonna pivot. And if you're not yeah. flexible, it's just gonna be harder on you. And you just have to learn to kind of roll with it. Totally. Before we wrap, let's go ahead and go over some of these most common questions that you get. Yes. This is like literally every conversation. And pay cuts. <laughs> we did not do pay cuts. Everybody has 100% of the same deliverables. There was no, hey, you're only doing 80% of the work, so you only have to do 80% of the tasks, so take a pay cut. It's, just, it's the same amount of work. It's just in a little less time. Does anyone work five days a week? We did touch on this. It's quiet work. There's very few times. There's been one or two meetings and it's been the same thing like, oh, I'm taking Monday off because this person can only meet this day or we had a repair or a patch or something. Yeah. Next one, compliance. Please don't come for me. Everyone is exempt at our company. They're all, they are all out, non-hourly salaried employees. So we don't have an hourly requirement. There's been loose talk of like 36 hours. I would say we probably do more than that most times. And the way I've always presented it when I was hiring my generalist, I have had eight hour days. I've had nine and a half hour days. There's been one like 12 hour day, but it kind of ebbs and flows depending on what's going on in that season. And again, I am empowered to be like, Hey, I had two really long days last week. So I'm blocking my calendar for the afternoon and I'm just going to go take a nap. Mm -hmm. It's all about being empowered for that. And it's all about your deliverables. If you have tasks and you're not saying, hey, I'm over behind, I'm, I don't have the tools, I don't have the contacts, I don't have, and you're just not hitting them, that's a very different conversation not tied to four-day work week. Great. PTO, this is the number one question. We actually had to force people with a minimum because everyone's like, I got three-day weekends, I'm good. I was like, you have to take a week. I just read a study this week that said it takes eight days to kind of mentally reset on something. So we do require, it's a Saturday to us the following Sunday. In theory, it should be a Friday to the following Sunday, or if you're on the support schedule, a Saturday to the following Monday. But we're very much trying to make people take that break. And again, emphasize, you're not just an employee. You're a person, you have interests, you have these things. And the last thing we'd like to change, I one, I would really think getting the buy-in before the beta, because we just didn't. We kind of just were like, this is great. That'd be <laughs> helpful for addressing roadblocks. And I think the one thing change is really emphasizing the flexibility because if you come in and then something happens or your point person and it's the one day your point person in the world is on fire, it's easy to be like, oh, and then I spent a whole Friday working and kind of forgetting, but like, I'm also off on Monday. So it's really, I think setting that expectation, I would change. Like this is a flexible thing. You're still being paid a full 20, 80 salary. And we, we love you. We want you to have time there's still a business need and we will do everything on our end not to make it a 52 Friday business need. That's amazing. Ryan, I think I'm going to like go back to your talk and create my own Harvard business review of how to <laughs> implement a four. Well, I'll say how Blackthorn implemented a four. You are week. welcome to tag me in. I'll just pop it okay. inside and be like, Hey, here's what we should do. Stephanie deserves some Friday. <laughs> I'll do a little write-up. Maybe I'll propose it to my company. Maybe not. But I am grateful to live in this world where work is so much more flexible and people are thinking more creatively. And it's just wonderful to hear about how Blackthorn did that and the role that you had in that. So thank you for sharing. Thank you so much, Stephanie. It was great to be here. Yeah, wonderful to talk with you. Thanks, Ryan.